Auto Web. Welcome to the Millionaire Car Salesman Podcast, Auto the Web. number one resource for automotive sales professionals, managers, and owners Auto Web. to learn how to make money, accumulate wealth, and to all out a wall out in the auto industry. And now, your hosts, Sean V. Bradley and L.A. Williams. And we're sponsored by Auto Credit Express. Yes, yes. Auto Credit Express. Yes, yes. Auto Credit Express. Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is L.A. Williams, the blind phone master. And I am here on the Millionaire Car Salesman podcast. And, of course, I got my main man with me, Mr. Sean V. Bradley. What's going on, Sean? Yo, what's up, people? This is SVB in the place to be, the millionaire car salesman. What's going on, LA? You're from, you're like, I don't see you video wise. You know what I mean? I know you don't hey. see anything, you know what I mean? But I don't see yeah, you. Right. Now, you're going to have to enter into my world today, baby. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you're going to have right. to play the blind card today. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you like the listeners. You know what I'm saying? Right. But um, now we got a phenomenal guest, man. I've been spending time. Um, you know, really all month of January with a, a $2.5 billion um, you know, auto group. And man, I'm telling you, this, 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 there's some really powerful people there. Obviously, I mean, it's a $2.5 million, you know, billion dollar place. You're going to find some rock stars, right? And so, man, we came across a couple of them, but man, one in particular, we had to bring on it. We had to bring on the show. Am I telling the truth, Sean? Yeah, absolutely. So bring her in. Hey, listen. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, you guys have no idea. We were just kind of kicking it a little bit before uh, the show began. But listen, I'm telling you, you've got a powerful, powerful woman um, that you're getting ready to hear from. I'm talking about a serious, super duper, top notch saleswoman. Ladies and gentlemen, everybody give it up for the one and only Morgan. What's up, Morgan? Man, that is an awesome introduction. I am so excited to be here. Thank you guys so much for having me. I am pumped just to be a part of your world. So Morgan, my first question, because people are going to like, usually when they hear the podcast, especially yeah. they're going to go to the group on Facebook, your, your name is a little bit different. Your name is Morgan Anderson, but on Facebook, you're Morgan Brittany. Brittany. Okay. So yep. the reason why I'm saying that we definitely need to mention that because people are going to hear this. And if I was a salesperson, I would want to find you on Facebook so I could either yeah. friend you or I could learn from you. So again, don't get dis disappointed or confused. If you're looking for Morgan Anderson uh, in the Millionaire Car Salesman Group, she's going to be listed under Morgan. Brittany. Morgan there Brittany. You go. There you go. B-R-I-T-T-A-N-Y. There Absolutely. are- 7,000 Morgan Andersons, but there's only one Morgan Brittany. And uh, that, was the, that was the easiest way to find me on Facebook. My customers couldn't find Morgan Anderson. It was just, I was getting lost in the mesh. Like, so I was like, all right, let me use my middle name. There's not a lot of Morgan Brittany's out there. So it was uh, so much easier for my customers to find me, to be connected with people. And it, I stand out a little bit more. Yeah, I get called Brittany all the time, but I answer. It's cool. I could get called a lot worse. <laughs> Funny story though, awesome. Mirza, right? I was really excited yeah, yeah. about the conversation with you because you didn't know that we were working with your store. And I'm like, no, I'm like, I'm like Morgan Brittany. And she's like, who the hell is that? And I'm like, Morgan. And I showed her, like, oh, that's Morgan. And I'm like, because I, I didn't know. Yeah. You know? <laughs> there you go. So LA. Mirza is amazing. She's a sweetheart. She, yo, I'm going to just tell you this. I've been in the industry for almost 22 years. Yo, your group is legit, like hammer, too legit to quit. There's a lot of people that say that they're they're balling or doing stuff, but I, I can tell you, I am really, really impressed. I mean, your store averages uh, around 17 units a piece is the average, you know, talking to um, your GM, Tim, but you are not average, are you? I mean, does anybody want to be in the car business to be average? Come on now. You know, let's, let's, let's zero in on that. You say that, but, but I don't think that they want, they, they would admit that, but here's the reality. There's 16,500 franchise dealerships out of the 16,500 yeah. franchise dealerships. The average dealership has 10 salespeople. So there's about 165,000 franchise salespeople. Then there's an additional 40 to 45,000 independent, you know, used car lots and, and, uh, used car, you know, buy here, pay here's. So I anticipate there's probably another quarter million there. So let's just say that we're over around 400,000 automotive sales professionals. Now, do you know what NADA says? The average salesperson sells 9.6 cars. So when you say hey, who wants to get into the business to be average, people could lie and bullshit and say all they want. I'm better. I'm great. But the numbers don't lie. The average salesperson sells less than 10 cars. Now, with that being said, let, let's bring you into this. What is the most amount of units you've ever sold in one month? 
in one month, my top so far to be beaten soon is 46 or 46 units. Wow. Okay. So 46 units. So understand yeah. you are almost five times more than the country's average, right? Okay. Next Maybe. question is, next question is this, um, what's the most amount of cars you sold and or delivered in one day? Um, I sold six this past Saturday. Um, I think I sold seven. Yo, LA. One day. Oh, stop. <laughs> you, you, you heard the LA. She said yeah. just sat on oh, Saturday. Nice and lightly. Nice and I just, I just <laughs> sold six cars on Saturday. Oh, you can't see me. I'm rolling my, my shoulders back. Like I, I sold six cars on Saturday. That's some funny shit right there. Damn. You gotta All right. love it. All right. Now question for you, but do you give cars away? Are, are you turning around and are you a mini queen or are you making money? No, I, I get money handed to me for making money for this dealership so oh. we, uh, uh, yeah so have you heard of the king and queen of the hills that they're doing right now for coons no explain it all right so every dealership are all our whole company wide if you were in the top 100 people that sold units that day if you say say the top gross for the company was fourteen thousand dollars that day for one deal, and then the next hundred people underneath of them it stopped, they cut off at seventy five hundred for deals. Those hundred people all get a hundred bucks handed to them the next day as a thank you. So I got three hundred dollars handed to me on Monday morning after Saturday. <laughs> That's awesome. That is crazy. Um, but I mean, it, and it changes. Sometimes it's the top 100. Sometimes it's only the top 20. And if you're in that top 20, you know, you did a good, like good job. What's the most amount of money and all money. Okay. So between uh, commissions, bonuses, spiffs, that, 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 that special coons money, whatever. And OEM yeah. spins. Like if you add it in, what's the most amount of money that you, that you grossed in one month? Um, I would have to say probably about twenty, twenty-eight, twenty-nine thousand. My gosh, twenty-eight, twenty-nine thousand dollars in in one month. You know what's crazy though? In one month, yeah. Do you, Do you ever think about that? That's what some people make in a year. What you, you oh, made it, a- mind blowing. Like, I, but my the funny thing is, is like I was never in the car business before. I was like making sixteen dollars an hour, thinking I was like, oh man, I'm doing really well. I'm above minimum wage. Like. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, I'm getting a thousand dollar paycheck. I'm like, oh my God, this thousand dollars didn't go anywhere. Like, how did I live for, I'm going to be 32 in a couple of weeks. Like, how did I make it this far in life and not knowing how to sell cars? Like I need, I should have started selling cars when I was 20 years old. I, I would have been retired by now. <laughs> so how long, speaking of which, how long have you sold cars for? Uh, July of 2017, I started. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, LA, wait a minute. LA, are you taking a vacation, LA? Are you going to do this interview too? Or are you just like- I know, where you at, boo? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> get him, get him. I think he oh. might've got lost. So I, I'm going to just oh, keep no. going. So right. uh, he's in the field. See, I, I, no, <laughs> I'm definitely in the field, but you know, he doesn't realize I got a voiceover to deal with. I got all kind of stuff, you know what I'm saying? And I ain't making no excuses. Y'all know I don't play those kind of games. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, my job is to kind of engineer and make sure stuff sound good and all that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, yo, but do you, but do no, you I'm s- definitely here with you. Yo, is that crazy what she's saying? Just like yeah. she's only been doing this for not literally even years, not even four years. Mm-hmm. And and if you – this is very important. Uh, four years ago, were you making $16 an hour or were you making a little bit more than that? I, I was making 17 <laughs> Yeah, you're the, you're the best. Okay. So let me do some math. 17 And was it was it 40 hours a week? So it was 40 hours a week. I was running a bakery and, uh, and then I found a way to make the owner an additional eight grand a month and, uh, didn't get any extra money for that. So it's mm. cool, but yeah, no well, benefits, no health insurance, no 401k. An, ex- an additional hundred thousand dollars a year and you get nothing. Yeah. So yep. l- l- wait a minute. There's nuggets here. Let me just, I want to just do the math here. So I just did the math on my calculator cause I'm not that smart. And, and basically you were making four years, less than four years ago, you're making $2,700 a month. And in less than four yeah. years, you made $29,000 in a month. You literally added more than a zero because adding a zero will only be twenty seven thousand in a month. You, you, you know what I mean? Like, like you know what people? Yo, you, you know what? Like that? That's like some drug dealer money. You know what I mean? Like that? That, that when people say, yeah, exa- oh, she's making it rain, LA. She's making it rain. She's making it. But no, but think, like, think about it. Like that's that's how crazy car sales is. And you know what? 
I am so excited to interview someone like you because you know what breaks my heart? And it, and I, I think it will now for you too when I say this is that think about all the people that leave the automotive industry and they say it sucks. You can't make money selling cars. And I'm like, what planet are you living at? Are you kidding me? I'm a multimillionaire because of car salesman, because I'm a car salesman. And you went from $2,700 a month to $29,000 a month. You know what? LA, that's the title of this, this podcast is, you know, um, uh, female car salesman because I'm going to play the female car because you get even more points because this is a male dominated industry and there's not oh, yeah. enough strong females like you that are here. I told you, you are like inspiration to, to, for me, for my daughters. Like I hope my girls, you know, can, can get to your level in this industry. I have four years. Damn. Okay. So LA, what questions do you have? Because I got a lot. <laughs> Listen, I, you know, I just love her energy. Yes. And so I guess the question that I, that I really want to have is, you know, how do you maintain that level of energy? And, you know, what do you do to, I don't know, whether it's get pumped up, whether it's stay pumped up. What, how do you t- talk about your energy and how you maintain those levels? That's that's exciting to me. A lot of drugs. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> totally kidding, guys. Sorry, sorry. Bad, bad joke. Um, um, I, I, ho- I hope to get like five hours of sleep a night. Um, I get home. I leave the dealership. Well, all right. I start my day. I my first alarm goes off around five fifteen a.m. By the time I get out of bed, it's about six thirty. I get to the dealership at eight a.m. We don't open until ten, um, and I'm usually here until nine nine thirty at night. Um, get home, take care of my dogs, take care of my animals, maybe eat some sort of food, and then I go to bed um, and rinse. Sometimes repeat and every day. And um, I just I'm I'm just excited to be here. I I love like. What's going to happen today? Who's going to yell at me today? Who's going to answer a phone and buy a car for me today? Like, I love the unknown. I love that, like, I could literally sell a $100,000 Corvette or I could sell a $5,000 car. Like, you never know what's going to happen in this industry. Is it going to be a freaking snowstorm? Is it going to be 100 degrees outside? Like, what's going to, what, what curveball is going to be thrown at us today? And, like, I think that's exciting. Like, if I had a nine-to-five cubicle job, I'd be miserable. Like, I, I wear heels every day. People are like, oh, don't your feet hurt? I'm like... Don't you get bored wearing like loafers every day? I don't know. Like, I, I just want to, I'm just excited to come to work. I just, I love it here. I love, I love just making people happy. It's, yeah. it's just what I, it's just me. If I, I love may. what you're saying. Because listen, let me just say this, Sean, because the same things that you just said, are the same things that most people bitch and whine and complain about. <laughs> Man, you never know what's going to happen. This is kind of like, that's why I hate the car business because I don't never know if I'm going to make a hundred thousand dollar car or five thousand. Like why? You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, and you found a reason. That's my thought process, right? People mm-hmm. whine and complain about, you know, oh man, it's LA, you can't see, man, I celebrate it. I'm like, yo man, cause I'm telling you, I'd be a problem if I had some sight. I'm just, <laughs> that's just how I look oh. at it, right? So we'd be in trouble. The the thing that I, I I'm hearing more than anything else is your your personality. Morgan, uh, I've said this as a manager that that's what managers look for when we're hiring. It's not your experience because most of the, the 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 majority of the the superstars in this industry didn't come from automotive. They came from different verticals: bakeries, food and beverage, entertainment, whatever yep. it is. But what all you really really need to be super successful in my opinion first and foremost is a freaking personality we're in the people business we're in the relationship building business and just the way you handled yourself in the first three minutes of this interview just your your vibe and as as, as, as i don't want to sound corny but it, it it comes through zoom you know i mean your energy your your smile your your enthusiasm and and i can imagine it's more amplified if somebody right in front of you sales is transference of energy if you're excited and happy and and and, and really you know just excited about it your customers are going to get excited and it's easy to sell to but if you're miserable depressed you hate your life you hate your job you hate your career the the prospects and and, and will never turn into clients la do you agree 100 percent, man it's crazy because sales is a transference of energy that's what it is so if you don't have no energy you mean you have no sales <laughs> and you're not going to get energy back like people don't come here bubbling with energy they're scared they have no idea what they're doing like you have to be their energy bubble like you give them the energy they're going to come to you they're going to want to be around you they're going to tell you things that they probably don't need to tell you like but if they feel good around you they're going to open up they're going to tell you what they can afford they're going to tell you what they want and then be excited for them and be there for them 
like don't walk up to them like hey uh what can i help you with today they're gonna be like oh um never mind i'm good like it's right be there for them be excited for them one of the things that i say morgan i'm like man when i ask people i say how often do people buy cars and then people say stuff like oh people buy cars every day like no people buy cars every three five seven nine years right right and then and so many times people super excited for somebody's birthday but when, when they buy a car, it's like, okay, hey, like, you know, what I'm saying? so like, you got to treat it like the experience that it ought to be. Just because we sell cars every day doesn't mean the same person's buying a car every day. Yes. If bought a car every day, like they'd be bored too. <laughs> yes, like, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. You have like, this is a once every five year experience for these people. Like you bet they better remember you'd be like, I love buying my car from Morgan. Like. Make them remember that. that every time they get in the car, I don't care if they see my face or they think of me, like they're they're gonna remember I sold them this car. Absolutely. Morgan, what I'd like to do is this. I wanna put some structure to this. So okay. let's go through this again. Give us a typical day. So uh, let's start from the outline. After this message. We're all ready to leave 2020 in the rear view and speed into 2021. What better way than with more leads than ever before? Dealer E-Process is the highest converting platform in the auto industry, and we're here to rev up your leads. With cutting edge technology and world-class customer support, we're ready to jumpstart your 2021. Visit dealereprocess.com or slash 2021 for your free 2021 dealer checklist to ensure you're checking all the essential boxes. Do you work five or six days a week? Six days a week. Okay. And that's by choice. You're not like made to work that, are you? Correct. I le- legally, my schedule is Wednesdays and Sundays off. But you choose to work an extra day and you choose to work extra hours. Is that my correct? Correct. All right. Correct. And I'm not just saying that to be facetious. I'm just saying it because, you know, success follows a pattern. There's a gentleman named Cody Carter. He sold 139.5 units of Tustin Toyota um, in California, December 2020, like last month, 139.5 cars. Okay. He made $71,000 last month on the floor. Now, the reason why I say that is one of his things, though, is he, this store opens at nine. He gets to the dealership every day at 6.30 a.m. And so I'm, okay. I'm just, and, and no, I'm not saying that you need to get there early. What I'm just trying to say is though you work extra days and you work extra hours to me, mm-hmm. uh, our, our audience needs to take part of that. You know, success is not going to come to the lazy. You have a woman here that in a very short amount of time went from 2,700 to uh, in a month to $29,000 in a month. And part of her success is that she's putting in that work. Am I, am I, am I correct by, by translating that? 100%. Okay, so take us through the typical day. Okay, again, obviously, deliveries, whatever. But like, so you get up in the morning, and yep. like some people, they check their phone, their Facebook, and all that stuff. So literally, and I'm not trying to be weird and personal, but like, I want to know the success. Okay, so when yeah. you first roll out of bed, like, yep. you know, do you have a ritual? Do you rush to work? Do you do you turn around and, and meditate? Like, like I'm dead ass serious. I want to know what the hell it is that you do to to, to <laughs> be successful. So let's break it down for people. You wake up. What do you do? All right. Um, I set four alarms. I know the first three don't count as long as I get out of bed on the fourth one. I'm good. Okay. Um, I we have a currently we have two uh, peeking ducks in our bathtub because uh, we're getting uh, our yard redone. So we have two large ducks that live with us in our in our bedroom, <laughs> very, very close quarters. Uh, we have a master bedroom and a master bathroom, so they're in our jacuzzi tub at the moment. Um, so, <laughs> so my job is every morning I take care of the ducks. So I have a. Uh, water being thrown on me and ducks biting me and flapping at me and that's my 30 minute routine to take care of them and then uh yeah that's my life right now i love um, it and then uh we have three dogs to take care of the three dogs um i shower fix my hair do my makeup i always have an outfit ready um heels are a must have for me i don't come to work in flats um no one ever has seen me in flats um, here it's, it's just how I carry myself. If I have heels on, I stand up straighter. I walk faster. I feel good. Um, people seem to sit up a little straighter when I walk around cause they can hear me coming. Um, and then I get here. Oh, stop, between... stop, 
Stop, stop. I love this. So again, what I'm hearing is that, you know, when you're prepared, you're not, you're not running around trying to find an outfit. You have things laid out, organized, oh, yeah. rock, and you're dressing to the nine. So you, you, because you feel good. So you, you know, that's going to make you feel confident and feel that's, that's your uniform. If you're a combat paratrooper, that's, you have a uniform, but you are a, you know, a freaking high polished sales professional. So you're going to dress the part, look the part, but more importantly, you're going to feel that part. Is that what I'm hearing? Exactly. I, I feel good. I look good. I, I come prepared. Um, so I leave the house between seven forty-five and eight. I get to work no later than eight fifteen. I clock in, I jump online to see what chats have came through that haven't been responded to. I grab all the morning chats um, that haven't been touched. Um, uh, what time do you do that about? Um, 8, 8.15 to 8.30. Ah, so while people are still coming into work and when they get there at 9 o'clock and, and figure out what they're going to have for breakfast and, and bullshit between whatever they did the day before, you already have spent 45 minutes to an hour in the chats and, and, and create an opportunity. Exactly. 100%. I'm, I'm there. I'm their first contact. I'm reaching out to them. I'm, I, I get, I see what came in overnight that hasn't been touched yet. Try to grab what I can from that. Um, service customers are here wandering around. I'm seeing if they need help. Um, there's no receptionist here that early. So I'm grabbing phone calls that come in like anything I can do. I'm the only one here. Why wouldn't I grab it? Yeah, no, I'm, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and then everyone else, there are a few other salespeople that are starting to come in early now. They get here between like 830 and 845. Now we don't open until 10 because of COVID. Right. Um, m- most salespeople don't get here until 930, 945. It's, so let me, it's mind so blowing to me. Let me repeat that, you know, for our audience. So you are not even open till 10 o'clock, but you get there at 830. I, if I'm here at 830, I'm late. I, I try to be here by eight. Yes. So you were coming to work two hours earlier than, than you're open. So for one reason, so you could prepare, organize, strategize, and start your day. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay, keep going. Yeah. So sorry. Um, yeah, so uh, managers get in at nine. Um, I already I work with one specific manager because we have a really good working relationship. Um, he knows what I need. I know what he needs. And I give him a list of 10 to 15 things a day that I need done. Um, and I hand it to him first thing in the morning and he starts to work for me. I'm running around getting cars pulled up, cars clean, cars gassed, um, getting appraisals done. And he's already at his desk working on things that I need to send to my customers. So it's, it's a very good, uh, symmetry going on or uh, whatever relationship, symbiotic relationship going on. And, um, when I come back inside, he hands me all the quotes I need to send out, uh, credit approvals, whatever I need. And then my customers all start coming in. Okay. And so help me go through the rest of the day. How much, how much time do you spend a day in, in your CRM, like organize your CRM, going through your opportunities, follow up and things like that? Um, I'm, I mean, I'm in there. So I'm here, say 12, say minimum 12 hours a day. I'm in my CRM, probably nine of those 12 hours, mm, just prospecting, wow. um, prospecting, emailing, following up previous customers, um, sending Go ahead. No, no, no. I Keep see going. your face. I see your face. Yeah, no, um, you know, so, yeah, again. So <laughs> here's why, because I'm thinking, uh, I, I bet you, even at your own group, if we turn and, and told your people, hey, look, you need to be in your CRM for nine hours, they're going to slap me. They're going to be like, are you out of your mind? So let's talk about that. That's a long time to be in the CRM, and that makes sense because of your success. But when you say prospecting, I want you to pretend like my daughter who only has two weeks in car sales, like, like selling okay. cars. So how would you explain that to her? Like, like, what are you doing? Literally? Like it's easy. If, if you, let's start with the simple stuff. When you're in your CRM, do you get fresh internet leads all automatically round robin to you? Do you get leads sent to you? Yes. Okay, good. So, okay. So that makes sense to me. So I could hear, okay, when I come into work, I hit the CRM because there's going to be fresh internet leads. Besides mm-hmm. internet leads, what other leads are forwarded to you? Any data money, equity, any equity money, any orphan owners, any unsold service? Like what type of leads get forwarded to you in your so, CRM? Um, orphan leads will get uh, broken out and just burst to us like that doesn't have like a really rhyme or reason to it um <laughs> equity mining will always go to the internet department first and then it gets dispersed so pretty much anything that touches our cm unless i personally put it in there as a phone up or a walk-in the internet touches or the ah. the bdc touches first mm-hmm. um, and then it gets distributed to me but again if um i'm on the parking lot and a customer says like oh i put a credit app in but no one's talked 
to me. I run in, find their name, put a note in the system. Hey, I up this person's parking lot. Now it's mine because I put a note in the system saying like, I made contact with this customer. It's mine. Put a note in. It's mine. Um, service customers. I walk back to service. I'm friends with every service writer there is. I hang out with them outside of work. They know me. They know my cell phone number. Their cards are at each service station because they like me. They send me, call me, hey, Morgan, can't, this person's in service. They just left their cards here. Can you get it appraised for me? I run back and do an appraisal for them. Stop. So that, this, is, this is me. Wait, whoa, 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 stop. This is a major nugget. Major, 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 major nugget. nugget. I love All it. Right. Yeah, because again, service, what, what NADA says is that a service customer is seven times as likely to purchase a vehicle from where they service the car from. So fact one, having service opportunities are low hanging fruit and a high close ratio one. Second is that a lot of dealerships and when you're on the, when you're on the sales side, for whatever reason, people don't really understand fixed stops and they don't care to. They're like, I sell cars, I don't fix them, whatever, which is like the Badger stuff, which is crazy. However, there's something called unsold service to sales customers, which means that uh, like every dealership has ROs, repair orders, and those are, you know, customers for the service department. And believe it or not, which I'm sure you know, but a lot of people don't realize, a lot of these people don't ever buy cars from that dealership. They just service and buy parts from. And so there's massive opportunities. What I never understood, Morgan, is why the hell would you sit in a dealership and do jack shit all day when a couple feet away is a service department where there's a tremendous amount of gift wrapped opportunities and so there's only three reasons i come up with and i'd like your opinion Uh, reason one is you don't really understand you don't understand the opportunity second is that you just don't give a shit because you're lazy and you're just existing in, in in the universe and taking up space okay the third is is that you understand the opportunity you're not lazy but you don't know how so let's talk about this here um like l- let's say there's people listening i think this is one of the best nuggets that we could start with you know besides your background and get motivated from you but the tactical stuff is i would agree with you that work in the service drive and work in the service opportunities are amazing you said something which i think is freaking brilliant is that you're friends with the service writer your friend that's like being friends with the bartender or or you know like that's that's who you want to make friends with you want to make friends with that and so a lot of people don't realize that is that they provide value i have a couple questions do you spiff the service writers or does the dealership spiff the service writers talk about that yes um, so any service writer that gives me a customer and they have to buy, that is the stipulation. Mm-hmm. Um, but a hundred dollars goes in a, as a referral check into their paychecks as a thank you to them. So they get a bonus. Does it come out of your pocket or the dealership's pocket? Dealership's pocket doesn't come from me. None of my referral <laughs> bonuses come from me. Why you know not? What? Like, yeah, exactly. So, so then all day. So, so then here's the amazing point here is I think that a lot of stores would do the same thing. A lot of stores would absolutely spit the service writers, you know, if it converted to a sale. So mm-hmm. again, I just can't, I'm just trying to think in my mind, well, if it's not even your money, you don't lose a dollar, the dealership will right. pay the referral. Why aren't you cultivating the relationship? Okay, good. So, cause it's crazy. Okay. But you're not crazy. You're smart. That's why you're so successful. So, okay. You had me hooked. A little bit of <laughs> okay, but it works for you. So yeah, how <laughs> how do you how do you handle service opportunities? So let's just pretend I'm the service writer, right? And I say, okay. Morgan, I got an opportunity. Now LA is the prospect. Okay, so let's right. let's role play a little bit or demonstrate. Like remember, even if it's just forget about the the tens of thousands of, listen, of people listening to this. Let's just pretend it's just Kalina Bradley, my daughter, right? Who right, cool. also works at a Chevy dealership, a Chevy Kia Super dealership. Shout out Kalina. So let's say you were going to train my daughter, and the example is this: I'm the service writer. Okay. I just gave you the opportunity the and the RO and then LA yep. is the, the person in service. How would you role play with LA to, to try to create an opportunity? Perfect. No problem. So the RO for anybody that doesn't know is a repair order. That is how service tracks their customers, their mileage, the vehicle that they're servicing, the VIN numbers on there, what's broken on the vehicle, how much it's going to cost to repair, what the diagnostic fee is. It literally is a, like a Bible for repair orders. Um, So my RO gets handed to me, hey Morgan, this customer has a $2,700 repair bill. They don't have warranty. Um, The vehicle had to get towed in, it's here now, whatever. All right, no problem. Customer's name at the top, cell phone number, address. I know they're local. Um, I'm gonna call them. I'm gonna call them, they're home. They're waiting for a call from the service department. 99% of the time they know their car is here. So they're going to answer their phone because they wanna know what's wrong. 
So I call him. Ring, ring, ring. Wait, let's do this after we hear from a sponsor. Don't be the last one with your hand up at the auction. VinQ Vehicle Buying Center gives dealers the digital and in-store tools you need to buy direct from the public. On average, inventory bought from the public grosses $1,200 higher on the front end alone. VinQ turns buying cars direct from the public into a business. The most profitable dealerships in the country are making hundreds of thousands of dollars a month in additional front end gross. Private party acquisition starts with VinQ. See it at VinQ.com. Hello. Hey, LA. Hey, hey, LA. This is Morgan over at Coon Chevrolet. Your car's back in service right now, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, service writer Charlie just came up to me. He gave me a repair order. I'm just going to touch base with you. Um, he said that unfortunately you're out of warranty right now. So I want to go over yeah. some options for you. Um, just, just want to touch base, see if you'd be interested in maybe getting into a newer vehicle that's not going to have these problems and keeping your payments as close to possible as the same. Would that be okay with you? That would be more than okay. Right. All right. Great. So, um, uh, what I can do is I'm going to run out back. I'm going to get your vehicle appraised. What are you looking for in your new vehicle? Um, obviously you want something that runs, but what else? <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I, I just needed to, I just need, I mean, if, if I could have something that's doing the same stuff, I mean, I really like my car. I just don't okay. like that. It's, you know, having these challenges. So. All right. So pretty much you like your vehicle. If I can find something maybe a little bit newer, but the same features, um, and keep your payment the same, you'd be interested in maybe oh. swapping out of this. Yeah, my wife needs the heated stairwell, wheel, though. That's important to her. Uh, all right, that's fair. I understand that. I have one, too. I get it. <laughs> it makes your fingers nice and toasty for the winter. Um, but, right. yeah, all right, no problem. So you're scheduled to pick up your vehicle tomorrow at 4 p.m. Um, you want to just come in and see me at tomorrow at 4 p.m. instead of going back to service first? Uh, okay. <laughs> all right, sounds works. great. So yeah. I I love this Morgan back to the interview part the role play was awesome. So again, if what I got out of that is that these people have had an accident or had a situation, they they already right. they're probably thinking, "Oh man, I'm going to get hammered on this car. I got to have to it's going to cost all it's going to cost $2700 or more and and it's un like you have an easy pitch. To me, that's this is an easier pitch than up and a fresh right. up. It, right. It, it's it's an easier pitch because you are like the the superhero with the kung fu grip. You're saving the day. You're like, look, you know, and I know that it's stupid to turn around and drop three G's in a vehicle that's out of warranty, that's out of equity, yada yada yada. It's older that you might have. Let's say you invested three thousand dollars. How do we know that something might not happen in another couple weeks or a couple months or another year? Right. Let me turn around and and so you're presenting a solution that's better than the current solution that there. Wow, I, I love that. Give me a couple other scenarios how you could get a, a you know get to tee up from your service rider. Um, somebody's in the waiting room. They complained that their vehicle isn't big enough or it's too big. Vehicle's too big. They have a suburban. All right. No problem. I'm going to walk them back there. Um, hey, um, Mrs. Smith, Charlie just was talking to me. My name's Morgan. Can you come out here with me? Get them out from everybody else. Get them, mm -hmm. get them separated. Mm -hmm. Don't, don't talk to them in front of 20 other people. Everyone's looking at you. Get, tell them, ask them to step out of the service waiting room, take them over to a desk. Um, be like, uh, Charlie was just telling me that your vehicle is maybe a little bit too big for you. You bought it when your kids were in, um, in elementary school. They're now in college. This was 10 years ago. Um, you want to take a walk around the parking lot with me? Just see what some other options are. So many options out there. We have new and pre-owned. And most of the time, they're, going to, they're bored sitting in the waiting room anyway. They're going to walk around the parking lot with you. Right. Um, uh, and most of the time, if, if it's vehicles too big for them, uh, show them like a, a midsize SUV or a, I don't know, sometimes they'll surprise you and trade a truck for a Camaro. You never know what they're going to throw at you. But just yeah. talk to them like they're people, like ask them, like, what what's going to make them happy again? It's, how, it, it's, how many units do you sell a month on average from service drive or from the service, you know, queue up? <sighs> Unfortunately, it's maybe only maybe eight to ten it's, it's not. Yo, LA, she she's talking ish right now. She's just know, showing right? off. <laughs> she, that like, how, that's how many cars most people sell. Sell in an entire years. month. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Morgan, remember, we told you that the average salesperson sells less than 10 cars. And you're like, I thought she was going to say only like three or four or two or three. She's like eight to 10. You sell mm -hmm. more cars or the same amount that the average salesperson sells working 40 to 50 hours a week up in people, you know, putting plates on, doing all stuff. You just, you sell the same amount or more from the service drive just put that in perspective okay yeah, so I, I, yeah okay so this I, is good so I this is reactive 
Well, you should because you should be proud of what, what, what you've done. So, Morgan, if I'm understanding, you, you, that you just talked about what I would call reactive. You're, you as a sales professional are reacting to the service rider or to, the, to being queued up. What about proactively? Do you ever you know, uh, use data money, equity money? For example, you could get a list of people that are coming into service for an appointment and you could cross-reference them in Reynolds or UCS and you could say, okay, this person has equity in the vehicle or this person's got a car that we'd love to be able to buy back and trade. So do you ever proactively create campaigns to, to approach people or not really? Um, not me personally. We as a dealership, they do, Tim sends out his emails, uh, mm-hmm. hey, you have equity, um, but it's not a one-on-one basis. I don't have um, access to that in- information whatsoever. I can't see um, equity situations. I can't see what they spent or how much they owe. Like, I don't. My CRM doesn't have any access to that for me. Um, I We do have... Um, any previous customer that's coming in for a service appointment, we do get a notification the day before. So we know our customers when we back there. So I always make a point to walk back and say, Hey, how are you, Mr. Wilson? Um, and just like, just so you can connect with them again. Um, but other than that, we don't have the opportunity to see the equity situation. No, no, that that's kind of stuff. I was just, I was just, grasping because I, I just am so impressed with with this, the way that you're doing it already. I didn't know because some people do do the data money, equity money, but man, you're doing so much mm-hmm. there. Okay, good. So let's transition. So service. Wow. Okay. Yeah. How else do you, how other, what other ways do you get business? So out of the 40 cars, about 10, 10 of them, mm-hmm. about 25% or 20% of your sales is from service. How many I- would you say are coming from fresh ups? Not, not internet or phone appointments that come in, but fresh ups. Um... So this, I, I have, it's going to sound bad. I've never sat in the vestibule. I've never stood at the door. It's Smart. never been my thing. Smart. Like it's, it's, I, I don't, somebody, when my, when the trainer hired me for this uh, company, she said, do you want to be a shark or do you want to be a minnow? If all the minnows are standing at the front door, be the shark that's in the back lot by yourself. Be the shark that's out on the parking lot by yourself. Be the shark that's figuring out a different way. Like, don't follow the minnows. And it's really stuck with me. Like, it's I don't want to be part of the masses. Like, so I have always kind of found my own route. Um, I do. So I got a, I got a story for him. So I love Camaros. I love Corvettes. And so I have eighteen hundred friends on Facebook. And these are friends. Like I know them personally. Um, and so I always like just here and there. I'm not one to shove car sales down my friends throats it's just not who i am but they always know i'm here for them so i just because sales have been so slow for me i'm freaking out this month that my sales were down so it's halfway through the month and i only had 15 cars out like i'm i'm stressed and uh, so i went i <laughs> stop i know all right so i went on the back parking lot and a z06 got bought off the street a guy came in sold it out right to us when um uh, I think it was Friday or, or Thursday night, Friday night, Friday night. And uh, so I just went out, snapped a picture of it. I posted it to a private Corvette club of Maryland, just saying like, hey guys, I just got the Z06 and does anyone want it? Tell me why a guy showed up and bought it on Saturday morning. <laughs> Yo, yes, 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 yes. That's crazy. So totally Love shot it. in the dark. Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> And get this, he tra- so he bought a 2015 Z06 and traded a 2019 Stingray. Like, stop. <laughs> That's crazy. This guy, this guy friended me on Facebook. He's sending me clients. He's like, everyone, that guy needs to go see Morgan in Maryland. Like, I am, like, this guy is pumping me up, like, no tomorrow. And he didn't even know me I mean, uh, prior to Friday. Like, it's not even been a week. It. Wait a minute. These are too many awesome nuggets here. So I want to bring back for the audience. <laughs> sorry, so, sorry, so sorry. no, no, this is good. So I want to, I wanted to kind of like, like pace this. So what I just heard you say, was freaking phenomenal. First of all, I think it's utterly absurd that you are stressing that you only have 15 cars in half the month, because that means that at a bare minimum, you should be doing 35 cars and that, you know, but I, I know that's light from 46, but again, you already sold in half of the month. Fifty percent more than the average salesperson sells the entire month. I just want to just put that out there. Now, with that being said, you were creative because you were a little bit light from where you'd like to be. Right. You were thinking about ways instead of like being a victim and like, "What was me?" Wah, crying and bitching and complaining. And what was me? You're like, you know what? Let me put my big girl pants on and let me try to figure something out differently. And you basically took in a trade, your dealership took in a trade, you took a picture of it, and here's the learning nugget that I wanna be a little melodramatic with right here, is you posted it where, I heard you, but I want I want you to repeat it for the audience. 
a private like members only Corvette Club of Maryland. I I've been a member like one there, and I just never posted, so right. I just took a shot. And so, but can I just tell you that 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 right there is is really good. I'm also I study patterns with all the other people that I'm interviewing on the Millionaire Car System Group. There's a woman that I referenced training your store on Monday. Her name is mm-hmm. Kate Jurgensen. She's from Ramsey Subaru in New Jersey. She okay. is um, in her 20s. She's got two young girls and she made like $15,000 in a month selling like, you know, 25 or 30 cars or whatever it is. But what yeah. she does, she's in the mommy and me groups on, on social media. Oh, yeah. Remember that she's also yeah. in the the Subaru uh, off-road groups and she's also in like the, the Subaru tuner, like Fast and the Furious groups. But she's about that life. She She's into tuning cars and off-roading mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So, but she said that she gets a lot of business from these groups. And so my question to you is, have you just been turned out? Have you turned around and been turned out with these groups now that you turn around <laughs> and and you had such success, not only in the sale that quick, but the relationship you built with this person that's now an advocate and an ambassador of yours, are you now motivated to start finding other Facebook groups and other groups to be able to start posting in? Great well, I got question. kicked out of two this past week already because I posted too much in them. So I'm, <laughs> I'm only going to stick with the one I'm allowed to post in. But, okay. That's but, funny. Uh, hey, hey. Um, here's a nugget for you. So yes. what day did we have our Zoom call last week? I don't like remember. A, m- Monday or Tuesday? Yeah, Monday or Tuesday. I yeah, yeah. I I didn't post until Friday and I've never done it before. So who do you think gave me the idea? Oh, oh! wow. Oh, snap. I ha- Really? Okay. <laughs> yeah. LA. That means a lot to me. So are you yeah. like, that's pretty cool. You know, again, I try to just give information out there. And that means the, the world to me. So LA, I had basically had a had a Zoom meeting with Morgan last week and I just gave her a build a brand website because mm-hmm. I believe that she's gonna be a great brand advocate for build a brand and she's gonna actually do something with it. And she, I think we talked about Kate, we might've talked about her before yeah. and that's, oh wow, yeah. okay, good. And so you thought about the group and you posted and you got a sale. That means the world to me. And that was just, yeah. just like us, just talking conversation back and forth. I know. But, yeah, so many I people, so many, it. listen, so many people we give advice to and they go, oh yeah, that sounds great. And then you go, they go home and don't do anything, right? So that's just, it's a waste. It becomes a waste of time uh, for us to, you know, pour into people, but we continue to do it, right? And then somebody like you comes along, listens to what we say, and then they win. <laughs> <laughs> so we yep. love it. The information actually sticks, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's pretty cool now. And so the thing that I really like uh, what LA's point is, is that you're listening to the information and you're applying it and some of it's going to work. Some of it might not be the right fit, but then that's what, that's what experience is. And that's why I do this, the show and why LA and I are so passionate about it is because just like I was talking to you, unfortunately, the majority of people that listen to this are not going to execute. That's, that's the nature of human beings, but some people that are hungry like you are being successful and they want to do more, be more, achieve more, might be like, man, that woman, Morgan, I mean, she got her shit together and holy crap, that's a good ass idea. Let me try that. And so I think that you, your story and your tips are going to inspire some of our listeners on the podcast and the group to be able to do some stuff, but I want more. So, all right. So, so social media, let's talk about that. Uh, How, like, how do you prospect and generate referrals like besides this group? Because if you just started this and that's not your normal thing. So besides this, mm-hmm. do you use the internet? Do you use social media? You know, and if not, okay, you, you do damn well without it. And I think when you start using it more, it'll be even better. But how do you generate right. referrals and, and your own prospects right now? Uh, I have an amazing group of friends that either have already bought from me or are trying to buy from me. And Everyone knows somebody looking for a car. Um, it, it's it's an incredible word of mouth when you have a good experience with somebody. And especially, like, I went to college. I've had 50, 11 jobs. And I've met so many people along the way. I live in an amazing community now for the last two years. And, like, it's just every person that you meet knows somebody that's looking for a car. And if you just – you don't need to shove it down their throats. But make sure they know, like, you're the person to come and see. Um, I had a couple, a couple quick stories for you. Like uh, my next door neighbor, his, his, his son-in-law owns a dealership and his daughter had, um, had gotten in deep with a vehicle needed to get out of it. He took her vehicle up to him to buy it. And he was like, I'll give you 10 grand or whatever, 10 grand for it. And they needed 16. 
they called me I came here and we bought it from him and got her out of trouble like he didn't have to come to me but he knew mm -hmm. he's like Morgan can you help me like he came to me because I, he knew I was his next door neighbor and he came in and saw me and I helped him um another person posted on Facebook who I went to college with who I wasn't even friends with he said who is the go-to Chevy person for bulk car deals and five people tagged me and I made a seven car deal out of it. it hasn't went yet for this month but it's going we have a seven car deal going out to some um other state like it's I'm, I'm so gracious for my friends it, you know, it's pretty cool powerful very powerful and, and there's people unfortunately that are in the automotive industry and they don't realize that this is a people business and they basically binge watch like Netflix or whatever it is and they're in their house and they, they don't network. They don't, they're not part of the community. Everybody that, I, that I've mentioned to you before and, and all my clients like Ali Retta or the Cody Carters, the people that are putting ridiculous numbers up, they don't take fresh ups. They are repeat business referrals. It's all about relationship selling. So I think that's awesome. I do have a question for you though. Do you train your people? Because you are good because I think that part of it is you have a very unique personality. You know, you're, you're a people person. You got good energy like Ellie had talked about. But I also think that you are very skilled. You know what I mean? And I think that you are very, very skilled at your trade craft for car sales now. And I think that's partly because of training, because of partly environment at the organization you're in. You do work for $2.5 billion dealership, a dealer group, and they have a lot of resources. But I think that a lot of times salespeople – don't properly train their friends or they don't train their family or they don't train potential referrals. I believe that you need to let people know because you said something very powerful. You said people know where to go if they need to buy a car. I don't push it on them, but they know. So how do they know? Is it just because it's instant combustion or because you – passively, respectfully, let them know. We're going to find out right after this message. Auto Credit Express is the leader in subprime auto financing. For over 20 years, we have served the online consumer working to match the best dealers with consumers who need their help securing financing. With more than 250,000 leads per month, Auto Credit Express is the authority for dealers who understand that the special finance deal generates a higher gross profit. We've worked hard to innovate our solutions, bringing you buyer assist to drive consumer text engagement, building out robust solutions to help the underserved Spanish speaking community. We now deliver proof of income on our leads through our proprietary steps feature and are building dealer branded social media marketing campaigns to help you, the dealers, build your brand. Contact Auto Credit Express today to learn how we can help you own your market for subprime finance sell more cars with higher gross profit and partner with auto credit express today mention the millionaire car salesman podcast for a special discount today okay morgan tell us how do people know casual conversation oh what do you do for work oh i, I work in king chevrolet i'm a car salesperson and they're like oh car salesperson you're sh you're probably super shady oh. i'm like no i'm real honest that's why i do so well and they're like well let me run something by you what do you think of my situation <laughs> and like yeah yeah. Like, hold on. You just called me shady and now you want me to tell you something. <laughs> right, right, right. Exactly. It's, because it's just it's a no, test. It is. Yeah. It is. It's a hundred percent test. And most people are in bad situations because they're uneducated on how to buy a car and what it what it means to buy a car. Um they think make, making the longest term possible and the minimum payments is a good idea. They think taking a 24% interest rate at, 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 instead of getting a co-signer is a good idea. Like they just, they don't know. And I take my time and I go over their options, whether I can help them or I can't help them. Um, I've had a customer, he's bought four vehicles from me. His daughter's buying from me. His mom bought from me. His wife bought from me. It took me a year and a half before I could get his credit score up enough for him to buy from me. Wow. Like his name's Joe. I, Joe texts me for my birthday. I text Joe for holidays. Like Joe loves me. <laughs> when, when I lost my, I lost my house to a fire uh, two oh, years no. ago. I lost everything. Yeah. You guys uh, don't know that. I lost my three, I lost my three dogs. I lost my <gasps> turtle. Like oh, I lost everything. I am so like, sorry. I, yeah. Really? No, it's cool. It's like, I, I, I took, I take five days off of work, but I'm okay now. Um, <laughs> <Yeah. but> Amazing. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was definitely tough. It was um I don't even know when it was. It was July first of two thousand eighteen. It was one year into the car business, and uh, it was tough. And all my customers found out, and like 
I mean, it was amazing. Like I, I took a week off or five days off and then I sold, I think 28 cars that month because everyone <laughs> knew and wanted to help me. Like, I was like, thanks right. guys. <laughs> yeah, that's anyway. awesome. So here, yeah, and, here's what um, I want. I want to, I want to point out something though, because I heard you mention, you said it took you a year or so to get his credit score up, right. In order to do that. Right. So talk a yep. little bit about that because, you know, that's something we talk about all the time. You got to be their coach. Like now he doesn't just look at you as some car sales lady that was like, no. oh, okay, hey, you can't, you can't buy. Yeah, your credit sucks. Bye. You right. know what I'm saying? Like yep. talk about big building his credit score. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, of course. So um, big dude came in and uh, he did a credit app over like before he came in, I called him. And uh, he was like, can I come in and talk to you? And he was in like a 2011 little four-door sedan. And this is a big dude. He's probably 6'4 and probably like pushing like 300 pounds. Like, he, I mean, like he's a big dude and he's sitting in this little car. I'm like, hey, man, I'm Morgan. What's what's going on? He's like, I just I just need to get out of this car. Like I, I'm paying 400 and some dollars a month. It's breaking down on me. I'm like, all right, let's let's take a look at things. I mean, he's had more issues than any anyone else I've worked with and he was just so desperate and I'm like this here's your options like I either need co-signer I need money down or here's your credit cards that are hurting you get these paid off get these paid down come back and see me six months came back and saw me his credit score went up his credit cards were paid off I said Joe give it six more months you'll get into a truck he wanted a $45,000 Silverado and he was, I mean, it was a $900 a month payment. And I was like, all right, here's our next step. Let's do this, this, and this. Six months later, got him into his truck and he is happy as his can be and sends me every person that he even hears is looking at a vehicle. Um, his wife came in, bought a vehicle from me. He co-signed for her and uh, wow. now his daughter came in. Yeah, right? Like it's, it's just, it takes time to cultivate a basis that loves you. And it's there as long as you love it back like you have to show these people that you care otherwise why would they care he could have went somewhere else he could have he could have went to a buy here pay now kind of place and been in a truck but he didn't he chose to trust me he chose to keep coming back to me because i gave him hope and i promised him i would get him into a truck and i did like it just it just took time can yeah. I just say that that is what salespeople don't do enough. They don't, they, they, they only focus on instant gratification. What can I get from this person right now? Can I get a deal? Can I get a commission? But you're smart. You're planting seeds in the relationship. And so somebody might not be able to be a sale right now, but if you treat them with respect, with professionalism, with dignity and love, you know what I mean? Like you don't have to be weird, but you could just show respect and just care about yeah. somebody. They will really appreciate that for a couple of reasons. One, it's refreshing because most people don't do that in, in any vertical. The second is that if somebody is there when they're down and they, they don't disrespect them and call them a bogue, a roach, a, a mooch, a rat, like all these negative terms that we want to spit out of our mouth disgustingly, these are human beings. Like they really appreciate it. And to what you just said is the typical special finance person, in my opinion, that if you treat them with respect, kindness, and help them, they're going to be your biggest advocates and they're so loyal. Would you agree with that? 100 percent. he comes in just to say hi to me like <laughs> like he's he's just a good guy and now he trusts me he trusts our service department and like now he comes here for service too it, it's just it's a it's a snowball effect and it it, it could have been a done deal and i never saw him again but no it's it, you take the time to invest in them and they invest back into the dealership and you Wow. Awesome. Powerful stuff. All right, Sean. So we need to kind of like wrap this up. So good. We can't keep working all day long, right? So let's yeah, right, right, right. close out questions and you know, let's let's take it home. I'll, you could have a couple. I have one after. So go ahead. Do your two questions. I got one for my I have another one. Let's go, right, LA. So, <laughs> so Morgan, tell me, I mean, where did you get the idea? Um, I mean, seriously, the audacity. Like, okay, you know what? All right, all right you're making your 2700 bucks a month and everything like that. What even got you into the automotive industry? Because I mean, most people would just say, "Oh no, I don't, I can't do that. I don't want to do that." Like, tell us about that. I heard about the, you know, losing a hundred thousand dollars, that type of deal. But tell us about what got you into the industry, and then I want to, I've got kind of a follow up question after that. 
Sure. Um, so I was, I think I was um, doing a management at a casino. I was overnight at a casino. My salary is $42,000 a year. And um, I just got tired of it. I got tired of working 9 p.m. to 7 a.m. And I'd get home, I'd sleep all day and then do it over again. So I ended up leaving the dealership or the, the casino. And then I went to work at a bakery for a while, just trying to get into a regular job was un like, it just couldn't get like enough. I was so hungry, like to do more. And that's when I started doing other stuff, like creating more income for the bakery. And then I'm still like, God, I, I should be, I need, I'm bored, I'm bored, I'm bored, I'm bored. And um, yeah. so I saw a hiring event and car dealership make, make up to $75,000 a year. So I'm like, all right, let me walk. So I walked in here. All right, LA, let me paint you a picture. I'm five, nine and I have blonde hair and, um, I walked into this dealership with fire engine, red hair and a mini skirt on. Okay. I had no idea what I was walking into. All right. So I have no idea what I'm walking into. Everyone is in like suits and like hair, all like professional looking. I had gauge ears and I'm, I, I have tattoos. You wouldn't be able to tell by looking at me, but I'm covered in tattoos too. Mm -hmm. And, um, so I'm walking in like, Oh my God, what did I just get into? It's a class of 20. And I sit down and, this lady was amazing. And for some reason, her and I just connected. And it's, um, she told me, she was like, you got to change your look. And I, I cried. And I said, I don't want to. And I did it. And um, <laughs> I'm still here. And now I'm the top salesperson. It was, it was literally me wanting to be hungry and taking a shot. Like, and wow. I'm shocked. And I'm here. And I'm not going anywhere. Like, yeah, no, that's beautiful. You, you accepted the coaching. Yeah, I did. I didn't yeah. like it. But I did it. Mm. That's what I'm talking about. All right, excellent. So now, so that that, that was a huge uh, lesson right there. Now tell me, outside of the money, right? Outside of the okay. money, what keeps you in the business? What you know? What what is this 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 keeping you sticking sticking around? I really enjoy the people I work with. Um, I love the freedom that I have mm. here. Um, I love the 401k that I'm stacking money into. Um, I was besides the money, sorry, hold on. Besides the money, um, it's, clo it, it's, it's close to home. Um, it's a safe environment. It's, um, it's just fun. Like, it's just fun for me to be here. Like it doesn't bother me being here for 12 hours a day. Like if I was home right now, I'd probably, I don't know. I don't know. Playing with my ducks or something. I don't know. Like, um, <laughs> Like, what else am I going to do right now? There's like nothing's right. open. Like, why, why wouldn't I try to make as much money as I can here? Like, why would you need to enjoy where you are? Otherwise, you're never going to be happy with any amount of money you're making. Exactly. So managers, listen to what she's saying. All those key reasons. Are your people doing that? Are your people having fun? Or are they sad to be at the dealership because you're like beating them down, right? Are your people, do your people feel safe? Are they in a safe environment, right? Do your people feel these different things like outside of the money? Are, you know, are, that's the questions you got to be asking yourself. Because if, if you can't answer those things, but I'm telling you, this is the reason why you don't have a Morgan Brittany or Morgan Anderson at your dealership, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> so, Sean, yeah, those, that's kind of what I wanted to find out. No, so, I, I appreciate that. Those are good questions. So I want to yeah. just basically, you know, put it all together. So you have a tremendous amount of experience and more than that, you have even more tremendous amount of success for anybody, people that have been in the industry 20 years, never mind four years, you, you're doing amazing things. So with that buildup, my question is, what advice do you have for automotive professionals? Now, selfishly, let's use my daughter, for example. So what advice would you have? But no, let's not just for her, but all, especially female automotive sales professionals, because it is not equal. It's not it's not mm -hmm. the same. Uh, it's not the same how your your coworkers perceive you and engage with you. And it's not the same how customers engage you and perceive you. So with that being said, what is your message to f new female automotive sales professionals? How, what would you advise them on how to take this as a career and be truly successful and great at it? Okay. Um, all right. Some females may not like this, but be ready, ladies. Um, you have to have tough skin here. If you want to be the top dog, don't go whining. Don't throw a temper tantrum. Figure out your goals and set your mind to it and do them. Don't sit in the lunchroom gossiping about each other. Don't run around the dealership looking for an hour lunch break partner. 
sit at your desk, figure out your prospects, go out there and make videos, go out there and do product knowledge. I drive a Silverado. Guys come to me to figure out what's on their truck. Like figure out your product. Don't be the girl that doesn't know like how to do something. Learn how to drive a stick. Like I had, I couldn't, I brought my Camaro and it took me six days to get it home because I didn't know how to drive a stick. Okay. But I figured it out. Um, it just, just be strong. Like don't, don't go whining to your managers. Uh, get, get your stuff together. Like there's girls here that can whine and complain, but we all get our, just get it together and beat these guys. There's no reason you can't like it. I, I don't even know what to say. It's just don't be the girl in the dealership that everyone picks on. Like have your stuff together, know your product knowledge and just cry in the, cry in the bathroom. If you have to, like, don't let them see you sweat. I, I don't know. I mean, it's, there's so much that girls don't need a crutch for, like you, you don't need to use your girl card, like step up and beat the guys. I, I, I just, there's so much reach out to me, message me on Facebook. If you want to talk to me about something, if you're having a tough customer, text me, call me, like I'll figure it out. I'll help you. No, I appreciate that. Now that's like the, almost like an emotional response and, and feedback. Let's talk about tactical now. So whether it's gender okay. neutral, so I, I love what you said and that's great. But now what advice do you have for someone, male or female, to be successful? What does it take to be able to sell 46 cars, almost 50 cars a month? What does it take to be successful in this business? Be there. Don't, don't take two hour coffee breaks. Don't tell ask somebody to cover for you be there be the face of the dealership like be reliable if if somebody's walking in the front door and no one's standing there jump up from your desk get up there and grab the customer even if it's not your customer let your manager see that you're hungry and then they will help you if they know you're there and you're consistent um i do this every at the beginning of every month i write my calendar what my goal is and what my growth so what my unit goal is and what my gross goal is and at the end of the month, I better have beaten it. Like awesome, yeah, yeah. That's really powerful stuff. Basically, what I hear you saying is there's only eighty six thousand four hundred seconds in a day. Once they're gone, they're gone. So you got to maximize it. One thing that I say all the time, because you know I got that business in personal finance. I say if we could learn how to treat a second like a dollar, we could become mm -hmm. wealthy, right? Yeah. Well, you know, people are like oh, you know, it was only five minutes. No, that was three hundred dollars. Yep. You see what I'm saying? You can't yep. look at it like that. It's, so. Yeah, take your paycheck and divide it by the amount of hours you worked. Like, are you happy with your hourly rate? Are you mm. happy with your your buy your thirty minute rate? Like, you, what are you going to do to change it? Mm -hmm. Love I want to be at two hundred dollars an hour. That's my goal. Boss, get him. Well, listen, I got to just tell you, it was a real pleasure getting to speak to you. I am thoroughly impressed. I've trained personally over now 150,000 automotive professionals mm. in, in the last 20 years that I've been doing this, and you are definitely not the average person. Your personality, your energy, and then more importantly, it's the numbers. You know what I mean? All that's great, but can you put numbers on the board? And apparently you can. So you should be very proud of your accomplishments, and, and I want to thank you for taking time out of selling two or three cars, you know, that you could have while we were on this interview. And, uh, you know, this morning, it's fine. Oh, LA, this, she's <laughs> too much. I love it. I love it. But I, I, I want to just thank oh. you for taking the time out, you know, to be able to share your, your knowledge and your experience um, and, and your, your wisdom with the industry. So thank you so much. And I look no, forward to sharing you. your success. Okay. 100%. Sean, uh, LA, thank you so much, guys. I, I hope you have a great night. I hope to see you soon. Attention auto dealers, you need an opportunity to do business to do business. AutoWeb is one of the largest suppliers of high quality leads. I mean, high quality buyers. At a 10% closing ratio, you will be at less than $190 per car sold. Don't just settle for what you get. AutoWeb can fully customize your results through targeted markets and or zip codes. And as a partner, you will get premium placement within search results. Who better to do that than literally the people that invented automotive internet sales? If you want to sell more cars more often and more profitably, then you need AutoWeb. Auto Web. Auto Web. Auto Web. Auto Web. 
if you enjoyed this podcast, then make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and leave us a review. You know, let some other folks know about it. Oh, and don't forget to join the Millionaire Car Salesman group on Facebook. We'll see you there.